Hey there everyone, my name is Nam Pham and what I'm going to go through with you today is a build of the GEP RC Mark IV 5-inch clone frame. Yes, this is the clone of the Mark IV and not the original. Uh, and I'll point out some of the differences I could see based off the original Mark IV photos online. I'll also be going through all of the other components I've chosen for this frame as well, which I think are fairly on the budget price point. Uh, such as the uh, Omnibus uh, F4 V3S Plus flight controller, iFlight Zing 2207 motors, um, the Eachin TX805 video transmitter, and the uh, Cadex Rattel 2 uh, that I just got. Um, so the reason why I decided to upload this build video is because while I was searching for all of the parts in this build, I wasn't able to find specific videos or basic information like wiring diagrams, for the parts that I was after. I'm sure you got Joshua Bardwell, uh, Stu from UOV Futures, RC Model Reviews, Drone Mesh, Mr. Steel, Rotorite, I think all of those guys and many more for all the information they've put out there that help guys like myself learn and enjoy the hobby. So I figured since I'm building this thing from scratch, I may as well share it with you as well. Um, there's just so many options for parts out there old parts, new parts, uh, newer technologies, and all sorts of combinations you can put them in that no one will be able to cover them all. So I hope this helps someone out there, even if it's just for a small part of it, for any one of these components. Um, and hey, maybe there's other weirdos like me out there who just love watching build videos. So uh, anyhow, just a few formalities before we get started. This is the first video in the build playlist so if you're after a specific install of a component in this build, you can find it in the playlist linked below. I've linked the parts in the description as, uh, as well down there. So if you're interested in getting the same or if you want to check out any of the further detailed specs that I've missed here, um, you can. Uh, but I'll try and cover all the important details as much as I can. Alright, enough with the intros. Let's get into the components breakdown. So, first up, we've got the uh, GEP RC Mark IV 5 inch clone frame. Uh, this is, you can see here, uh, 20, uh, 225 millimeters, uh, and that's a motor to motor distance or size. Um, it's uh, made for 5 inch uh, propellers. Um, there's also a 6 and 7 inch versions as well, uh, if you're interested in building a larger drone uh, with the same frame design. So you can see here, there's the instruction sheet. Uh, we'll go through that in a bit later. Um, it does have five millimeter uh, thick arms. Let's see if I can pull that out. You can see here, nice and smooth. Uh, they've filed it down so that you don't have to. Um, and yeah, all the other parts that come in here, the top and bottom plates are 2.5 millimeters thick as well. So anyway, we'll get through that uh, when we put that guy together. Um, next is the uh, Omnibus here. This is the F4 V3S Plus flight controller. It has a STM32 F405 processor. Uh, it comes with the on-screen display support, um, which most of the uh, flight controllers these days would essentially have. Uh, Built-in barometer, which enables you to see the altitude of the quad in the on-screen display while you're flying. The standard 30.5 uh, millimeter mounting. Um, it comes with the gummies, these red ones here. Um, and uh, yeah, the gummies are good so that when you mount it onto the uh, frame, it absorbs all the uh, vibrations and reduces them so that uh, they stop getting to the gyros, which affects the flight. Um, yeah, so um, it does come with also an SD slot for black box recording. It's very, very handy for uh, fine tuning your PIDs or diagnosing any ESC or motor problems uh, yeah, when you start flying it. So yeah, that's pretty good. All right, next up is the uh, ESC. So this is a 45 amp four in one ESC. Um, it was bought as a package, also known as a stack with the flight controller. Um, and the reason why I bought it uh, in a stack like that, and most people do as well, is because it just makes it a bit easier to install 
to the flight controller by using the plug and play interface um, cable that's included with the, the package. So this one actually came with two. One's just slightly longer than the other. I've checked the, uh, the color of the wires and they're basically the same. Um, so um, yeah, it just makes it easier to connect the two together without having to do any soldering. Of course, you're gonna have to do other soldering points as well um, to wire up the motors and the battery leads, um, the, uh, uh, the radio as well, sorry, the receiver as well. Um, so yeah, we'll get to that uh, later in the videos. The ESC has um, the same mounting dimensions as the flight controller, so 30.5 millimeters. Um, it has a 45 amp continuous current um, that it supports, uh, but also it supports up to a burst of 55 amps as well, uh, which might be overkill for this quad and uh, might even be that these values are overstated by the manufacturer anyway. Next up is the iFlight Zing 2207-2750 kV motors. So uh, it has a unibel design, meaning the main outer portion of the motor, usually referred to as, in the, as the bell, um, is made of one single solid piece of aluminium. Um, instead of two pieces, so the, you know, two pieces would be welded or glued together. Generally, a single piece bell should make it more durable than two pieces, but we'll have to see about that when we start flying. Um, I have heard that the Zing E motors, which also come from iFlight, um, are the cheaper economy versions of iFlight motors, but uh, they're not Unibel. But um, I've heard that they can take a fair beating without too much damage, um, so there's that. But I figured for the slight price difference, um, I just wanted something that uh, can take a bit more abuse. Um, so yeah, here we are. It's quite nice as well with the uh, red accents and the black body. So yeah, hope you like them too. Next up, we have the Eosheen TX805 Video Transmitter, um, also known as a VTX. So this has a uh, power output that's selectable at uh, 25, 200, 600 or 800 milliwatts. Um, it supports smart audio, which we'll go over a bit later when we install the VTX. Um, it has a solid MMCX antenna connector that you can see here, it's a small plug. Um, it comes with a standard dipole ant antenna as well. So I'll just pull that guy out. So it's this here. Um, I won't be using this for flying, uh, but I will be using it during the build, which you'll see later as well. Um, it also comes with an SMA adapter as well. On one end is the MMCX connector, and on the other side is the SMA connector as well. Um, so this lets you hook up uh, a much better antenna such as circular polarized antennas which I'll show you in a second. Um, this one is the SMA version so you can see it here and it says SMA female uh, but you can also get them in the RP SMA as well which is it just means reverse polarity SMA uh, and that means it reverses the gender of the pin and the hole between the VTX and antenna connector. I'll show you what I mean by that later um, it basically is how you connect the SMA on this end into the uh, antenna. Uh, it does come with, I noticed um, in, some, in the spec sheet, that it does come with a uh, microphone, um, which uh, I probably won't be using, but some of you out there might be. So that's a nice bonus. I'll put that down. Um, and uh, onto the antennas that I was just mentioning. So uh, this is the Foxier Lollipop antenna. I'll just pull that out. So there's two in this packet. Usually I would buy two. Um, one for the video transmitter that I just showed you and the other one 
um, that goes on to the goggles. Um, so yeah, when I purchased this, I made sure that I got the SMA version of it as well. So that is compatible with the um, SMA connector that comes with the VTX. Um, so yeah, this is the male version of the um, SMA connector that will go into the female version of the VTX. Um, also on my goggles, uh, they have the female version of the SMA connector. So I know that at least they will both connect to the devices that I have. Um, these are the design of them um, are better than the dipole antennas because they are circular polarized antennas, uh, which means they uh, give a much more even spread reception as opposed to the dipole antennas. Um, this is especially uh, beneficial, I guess, when you start flying a quadcopter uh, in freestyle, uh, as you're gonna be changing directions, uh, the angle it's facing you, um, or when you're doing rolls or flips and all those acrobatic moves. Um, yeah, the quadcopter is gonna be in all sorts of different angles coming at you. Um, so the reception, um, given that these is gonna make an even spread reception, um, it's gonna be picked up by your goggles much better. So, um, you can see that uh, both of these are right hand circular polarized, so RHCP on both of these ones. Um, so make sure that when you do buy them, if you buy them separately, that you buy the same, um, the same direction, I'd say. Um, because uh, it will not work well if you had one that was a left hand circular polarized, which you can get with a right hand circular polarized. Um, I won't go into the details, but uh, what would happen likely is that you'll just get a very poor um, signal strength between the two. All right, so um, that's enough about the uh, antennas. Put that down. Um, the next thing would be the uh, receiver. So here I've got, and it is absolutely tiny, um, the Radio Master R81 receiver. Um, yes, this is kind of an outdated receiver now with a FreeSky D8 uh, protocol, um, which only has eight channels instead of the D16 with 16 full channels to use. Um, I won't be using any more than eight channels um, that the D8 mode supports, so I'm cool with that for now. It also has a ninth channel as well included inside, um, uh, which is dedicated to RSSI. Now RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator, which is fairly uh, self-explanatory in itself. So for this receiver, the ninth channel for RSSI will send the signal strength that is being received by the receiver from the control transmitter to the flight controller. This signal strength information can then be displayed on the on-screen display in your goggles while you're flying to let you know when the controller reception is getting weak uh, and to fly back to where you started or, and, or else your, your drone's going to fail safe since it can't get any reception from the controller and unfortunately fall out of the sky so as you can see it also has the uh, diversity antennas which basically means two um, so we'll use the signal um, from the antenna that's providing the strongest signal that it's receiving so that's kind of nice um, so that's cool i'll put that down um, so for the props I've got here a few sets of the uh, GemFan uh, 5149 propellers. Um, they, uh, they might be a bit aggressive uh, on the pitch side, um, but uh, I do have also these, uh, these iFlight Nazgul 5140s as well. So these ones have a lower pitch, so they're less aggressive. Hopefully these can give a uh, smoother flight performance, uh, whereas with these gem fans, the 49 um, would actually be very aggressive and uh, might be a little bit uh, more for 
um, fun uh, flicking around and everything, um, doing more agile um, acrobatics in freestyle. So yeah, so these are the props. For the camera, um, I mentioned earlier, I do have the Cadex FPV um, Rattel 2. Um, yeah, so this, uh, you can see here, it has the uh, 1200 TVLs, TV lines. Um, it supports power and NTSC. Um, and uh, yeah, I've seen a few uh, reviews online and comparisons um, to the, um, the other cameras like the Foxy and Run Cam equivalents. Um, and what turns out is that uh, I, I like the, the contrast color and the dynamic range that it provides over the, the other cameras. So yeah, I chose it based on, on those reviews. Um, so yeah, it comes with a mount. It also comes with a control board as well so that you can cook it up directly to the camera uh, and you can um, change a few settings um, through there. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the components that are going to go through this um, build. Um, the controller that I'll be using for this drone and a few, my other drones as well is this jumper T light that I just got. So I'll be uh, keen to get this thing um, connected, uh, binded to the, the quad once it's all done. Um, I do also have um, Emacs box goggles as well. Um, of course, they're not uh, the best quality for FPV, um, but they'll do the job for now until I decide to upgrade later um, to a digital system, uh, which uh, provides much higher quality images. But we'll get to that later. So um, that's it for now for the components breakdown for this build. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and found it informative or useful. Leave any comments or questions down below and I'll try to get to them. Um, stay tuned for the next video in the playlist uh, where I'll get into putting the frame together um, or if you would like, fast forward to any of the other component installs in the playlist. Happy flying!